Hello everyone, in today's video we will show you how to create a holographic or holofoil effect in Unity 2021 using Shader Graph. This effect has been used a lot in the NFT cards or it can be used in any aspect in your video game. The video will cover everything from creating the card model in Blender to creating the Shader Graph to creating the stencil shader which will render the scene or the game objects inside the window of the card. This will be the last video in 2021 and I wish everyone a happy new year. It was a challenging year and we reached 8k plus subscribers by your support. We deeply thankful to everyone and especially to our patrons and we hope the next year will be better in all aspects for all. While recording this video my nephew Lulia has passed by and I asked her to make a wish so she wished to say something online and to become famous and I'll leave you with a word with Lulia. Happy New Year and I wish the best for you all. This is Ramiz al from Binary Lunar and let's get started. Let's start by creating the card model in Blender. So create a new project, delete the default camera and light, then change the scale of the box to 2.5 on X, 0.02 on Y and 1.8 on the Z. Then re rotate the card on the Y by 90 degrees. Then go to the edit mode, select the four corners of the card, then use the bevel mode to make the edges rounded. That can be done by holding the handler, we can see, then use the scroll up or scroll down to increase the smoothness of the edges. After that, click on the face select and select the back and the front faces, then use the face inset to create a border for the card. Next, click on point select and select the inner button button uh, points of the front face and move it up so we create something like a window which will show in it the scene or the 3d objects now we need to have four materials one material for rendering the shader graph of the outline of the card another uh, material for rendering the window, the third material for rendering a front logo and the fourth material for rendering a back logo on the back side of the card. Let's use different colors for each material to distinguish them. And now we need to create the correct UV for this card because currently the UV is considered the cube UV. To do so, let's click on the Y axis to face the front face of the card, select the front face, then we will use the U button to create the UV from the camera view. So select the front face, click U, then select project from view that will create the front face UV. We will do the same things for, for the back face. So click on the minus Y axis to go to the back face and repeat the steps to create the UV for the back face. Now we can go to the UV view and select both faces and scale them to fill the UV area. If you wanna select one face, you can select one point or edge, then select linked or by using the shortcut uh, Ctrl L to move things around. So we will scale both the faces UV to fill the UV area. Then we want to center the back face in the middle while moving the front face up so the front logo fills the UV area. For the edge of the card, we select any edge and we mark it as a seam, then we select all the faces around the card, then click UV and unwrap. Now we have the full UV for the card and we can export it to, to Unity. So click File, Export FBX, select only the meshes and save your FBX file. 
Now create new Unity URP project and import the FBX file to the scene. We will start by creating a material for the edges of the card. So let's create a new material and name it Hollow Matte. Then create a new lit shader graph to start building the shader. Let's start by the view direction node because it is the core of the shader and we will use the tangent space because it depends on the angle where we're looking at the game object. Then create a new float and name it rainbow parallax so that will control the angle on which the effect will be visible. After that multiply the view direction with the rainbow parallax and give the rainbow parallax a value of 0 0.23. We will create soon a tiling and offset node to control the tiling and offset of the rainbow. So now we create a vector 2 and name it rainbow offset and add it to the final results we got till now. So add the results of the multiply to the rainbow offset and set the values. By the way, all those values are experimental and I reached them after experiencing a lot with this shader graph. So feel free to mess around with those or change them to reach a different results. After that, create a tiling and offset node and link the results to the offset on the tiling and offset node. Then create a vector 2 and name it rainbow tiling. Set the value of the X to 0 0.21 and Y to 1 and link it to the tiling on the tiling and offset node. And now we need to access the X axis of the UV and we do that by splitting the tiling and offset node to get the X axis, which is represented by the red channel. After that, we create a sample gradient node and link the results to the time there. Then we create a gradient node and create a rainbow gra gradient. I already created that before. You can create it easily by doing a grades of color between red and violet. You will reach all the colors you can see now on the screen. Red, yellow, green, light blue, dark blue, then purple. Then finally link the results to the emission on the master node. Save and go back to the scene and let's see what we got. To apply the shader to the card edges, first we need to drag the shader on the material, the hollow material. Then we drag the hollow material to the instead of the main material. Now we can see a hollow foil effect on the edges of the card while we're rotating it because it's based on the view angle. This is a not bad result, but what I wanted to reach is to mask this rainbow to show at certain areas on the card, not hold the card. So on the next steps, we will create a mask to cover this rainbow at certain areas. To create the mask, we will follow the same steps we did for creating the rainbow. So we start by the view direction in the tangent view and we create a new float mask parallax and set the value to 0 0.23. We multiply that with the view direction. Then we add a, a mask offset, a vector 2 and repeat the same steps. The only difference here is the values of the tiling and offset and this will make the effect to look like not a rainbow that moving on the surface of the card but an, an area which is changing its color based on the mask location. So set the offset here to minus 1.066 and add it to the final results. Then create a new tiling and offset node, link the results to the offset, then create a new vector two, name it mask tiling and link it to the tiling on the tiling and offset node. After that, we access the X axis 
using a split node, then we multiply by 0 0.5 and use a triangle wave to center the mask. Then we use a saturate node to make sure that we don't get values above 1 or below 0. And finally, we multiply the rainbow with a mask to get a masked rainbow and connect the final results to the emission on the master node. Also to control the smoothness and metallic, we can create two floats and link them to the metallic and smoothness on the master node. Now we can hit save and go back to the scene, rotate the card and see that rainbow now which will show only at certain areas based on the mask. Now let's create a new shader for the hollow effect but for the logos. It's exactly the same what we did for the basic shader with only one addition. We will create a mask based on the logo. So import your logos as white and black PNG to use it as a texture. Then create new shader graph, name it logo holograph and create a new material, maybe name it logo holo mat. Then drag the shader onto the material, double click on the shader. It's exactly the same as the holo shader we created. So copy everything from there and paste it here. If you don't want to expose the parameters, you can skip those steps. I'm just converting the parameters into properties to expose them, but you can ignore that and move to the next essential step, which is creating a LERP node between zero and the masked rainbow based on the logo texture. So create a LERP node, leave the first input as zeros, put the second input as the masked rainbow, then create a sample texture to the node link it to the third input and create a new texture 2D property, name it logo and connect your logo there. And to have more control over the logo position and tiling, we create a tiling and offset node, link it to the UV on the sample texture 2D and create new two properties, two vector twos, one the logo tiling and the other one is the logo offset. Save the shader and let's go back to the scene. As I explained, we will use two logos, one on the back side and one in the front side. So we will need two materials. So let's create two materials. First one is the back side or back logo material. The other one is the front logo material. Then just change the texture based on the logo you want to be placed on it. Of course, those materials should, should be replaced on their places on the card. So replace the materials at their appropriate position, change the texture, and now we started to see the logo behind the card. But it's repeated because the wrapping mode has been set to repeat on the texture. So change that to clamp to avoid repetition. Now everything has been set correctly. We can increase the smoothness and the metallic parameters to one or something near one to make the surface of the card reflective. We repeat the same steps for the front logo. We just change the texture and reposition it using the tiling and offset to be in the middle of the front face of the card. As you can see, the logos are flipped, so you can fix that by going back to Blender and flip the UVs or flip the textures themselves. After that, I went to Polyheaven website to download HDRI Sky. I chose it to be a night scene to provide a nice reflections. Import the HDRI Sky, then create a new material and use the Skybox Paranomic Shader to add it as a skybox for the scene. Then use that material in the lighting settings to be the skybox in this scene. Then go to the main camera and set the background type to solid color and make it black. 
then enable the post-processing and create a new game object and assign a volume to it to add some post-processing. Simply adding a bloom override as post-processing is enough for this scene, so add the bloom and set the threshold to 1 and the intensity to 1. To control the glow of the rainbow, we can create a new property and name it Rainbow Glow Threads and then multiply it with the results of Sample Gradient. Now to the final step, which is rendering the game objects inside the card window. So you can render ob game objects or full scene inside the window of this holographic card. Unfortunately, the shader graph doesn't support the stencil buffer yet, so we have to do it the traditional way. So create a new shader, standard surface shader, and name it stencil shader. Then I found a documentary about this at Unity website that shows an example how to create a stencil shader. So I copied some commands from that website. I'll provide the link down in the description. Then I added only two lines to make this stencil buffer renders only what's behind it. So I just added the color mask to zero and Z right to off. Here the reference is two. We should keep that in mind because we will use that reference to render what's behind this window. Now let's create a new material and name it window and assign the stencil shader to it. Then replace this material with the material on the window on the card. So you will notice immediately that the window become black. Now let's create any 3D model. So maybe a cube and place it as a child to the card and set the Z value to minus something to be behind the card and place it on the edge of the card so we can test if, if it can show inside the card only. Now to do so, we need to create a new layer. So let's create a new layer and name it inside card. Then assign this layer to the cube because it will show only inside the card. Now go to the project settings, double click on the universal RP, then double click on the forward renderer and create a new render feature and name it inside card. Up in the filtering, in the opaque layer, we make it render everything except the inside card. Then down in the render feature we created, we make the layer mask render only the inside card. We set, we activate the stencil buffer and we set the value to two as we set it in the shader. And finally we set the compare function from always to equal so we can render only the render buffer which equals two in our shaders. So now as you can see while we rotate the card it rotate also the cube behind it and only renders it inside the window of our card. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification button so you never miss a video. Bye! We are grateful to our 86 supporters on Patreon who generously supporting us in this journey. This was a great year and thanks to you all. Till next year, see you soon.